Skeptics Review, The Bible, by John Smith. It's the Book of Acts, chapters 4 through 6. Hey again, faithful followers. I'm the Apostle Paul, here to continue the Book of Acts. So, after Simon, Rocky, Peter, and John preached to the crowds, the Sadducees threw them in jail. But the number of believers rose to over 5,000. Annas and Caiaphas brought Peter and John before them and asked, By what powers do you do this stuff? Simon Rocky Peter was filled with the Holy Spirit. Yo, yo, dudes. I healed that lame cripple by the power of Jesus Christ. You guys killed him on the cross. Annas and Caiaphas saw that Peter and John were monolingual, illiterate fishermen. But they couldn't discount that they had healed a lame cripple beggar. How could they? Evidence! Game over, atheists! So those Jewish leaders commanded Paul and John to stop preaching in the name of Jesus. Yo, guys, we is witnesses to miracles and wonders. How can we not preach about Jesus? So the priest had to let them go. Peter and John prayed to God. Yo, God and Jesus, you made the earth and put it on its pillars and stuff. The Holy Spirit dove spoke true King David. Who said some more specifically vague stuff that we can make apply to our current situation. Herod and Pilate conspired against Jesus. Whoa, conspiracy theory much? But all that they did was preordained to happen. So's you could die for our sins and stuff. Now more than ever, Lord, we need you to perform more miracles and wonders for the peoples. And then, some more indisputable proof happened. The ground shook after Peter's prayer, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. Everyone shared all of their possessions with each other. Followers sold their land. Some followers weren't quite so good at giving, though. Ananias and Zafira kept some of their money for themselves. Hey, yo, Ananias, what gives? Why are you listening to Satan and not the Holy Spirit dub thingy? Yep, I'm always the scapegoat. Well, when Ananias heard this, he fell down and just died. That sure scared the rest into giving up their stuff, I'll tell you, boy, howdy. Ananias' wife came in later, and Peter asked her the same question. Yo, Sophia, did you give us all the money from your possessions you sold? Well, she lied about it, too. Peter called her out as well, and she up and died on the spot. More indisputable proof. The moral of this story is, give God all your stuff and don't lie about it, or instant death. That's right. You all need to have more respect for Lord Yahweh. Oh, absolutely you do, Moses. The apostles went forth to do many more signs and wonders. People were even bringing lame cripples to sit in Peter's shadow in case they all got miracled up and could walk again. The Sadducees weren't too happy about all this hullabaloo. They put those apostles in jail, boy howdy. Even in jail, they were able to spread the good news of the gospel. Hey there, apostles. Gabe Angel here. God and Jesus sent me to open the doors of your prison for you to preach and proselytize. Have a wonderful day. And God bless you. Gabe, close the door on your way out. Were you born in a barn? Sorry, Gabriella. When the Sadducees sent for the apostles, they were not to be found in jail. Angel Gabe had even locked the jail door behind them on the way out. Those apostles were out preaching again, despite what the Sadducees told them. So the cops brought them in again for questioning. But carefully, lest the good Christian crowd stone those cops to death. The Sadducees asked the apostles why they kept preaching, 
when they distinctly told them not to. Yo dudes, we follows Jesus, not Jews guys. We has the Holy Spirit dove and stuff. This made the Sadducees extremely angry. So much so, they wanted to put the apostles to death. But a Pharisee named Gamaliel, who was a lawyer or something, told them to bring the men out. If they are mere mortals and they are wrong, then like other false prophets before them, their movement will fail. If they are right though, who can stop the will of God? So they flogged the apostles because why not? Simon Rocky Peter and the rest of the Jesus bunch thanked Jesus because they were so worthy of being flogged. Yo, thanks Jesus for letting us be flogged in your name. So the followers of Jesus were increasing but the Greek Jews said that the Hebrew Jews were not paying enough attention to the Greek Jews' widows. So the apostles said, Yo, dude's not our problem. We's too busy spreading the good news. You guys figure it out. Choose seven other men filled with the Holy Spirit up to solve the widow money problem. And then they blessed those seven dudes. And all was well. But then this guy named Stephen got into some trouble. He was filled with the Holy Spirit dove though, but they accused him of speaking against Moses and Lord Yahweh. Hey Looney Tunes 1.0, what do you think of that? What does Lord Yahweh tell you guys to do to them guys? Where you at Moses? Come on crazy town, weigh in here. What, nothing to say? Those accusers produced false witnesses against Stephen and accused Stephen of some stuff like literally taking something Jesus said instead of taking it spiritually and metaphorically. Atheists are constantly making the same mistakes, always taking stuff out of context. Well, Stephen's face looked just like an angel. Oh, like the angel Gabe? Satan, do you have a problem with my face? Yeah, it's kind of slick and shifty and smug all the time. You always look at people over your nose, kind of like that slick Matt guy. Ah, oh, you heathens think you're so funny. Hardy har. You won't be laughing when you're burning in hell forever for what amounts to finite crimes against a god you're not even sure that exists. Well, he does, and you'll be sorry, and I'll be laughing up in heaven, staring down at you sinners as you burn and burn and burn. So keep having fun and making your blasphemous YouTube videos, you stupid, stupid atheists. You just hate God and you want to sin. I feel sorry for you, but I totally endorse anything my God says about you, even if he condemns you to an infinity of torture for the simple crime of not believing in him. That's way worse than a serial killer on death row who repents before they lethally inject him because he repented at the last few seconds of his life. And he's getting into heaven, but not you, stupid atheists. Have fun burning in hell.